I'm out on the Mission Flats today. I'm bird watching. I see that I'm not the only one out here today. Hey, what's that boy doing over there? There's this very young person out there interested in birds also. Why are you still looking at the eagles there? Oh, wow, what a character he is. Man, look at him. What's he doing over there? He's looking all over the place for those birds. Check his binoculars. <laughs> Quite a guy. Bless him, Lord. There's a few eagles out here somewhere. There we are. There's just a few standing around. So why do they behave like that? That is what I sure would like to find out. I need to study them for a bit. Let's take a few moments to relax and listen to a song on my iPad here. Here's Eddie Mononen. Kartavatkin kotkat joskus matalalla, niin asunnot on niillä sangen korkealla. Ne siltä vuoriltansa alas laaksoon liitää, ja jälleen siipensä ne lentoon kohottaa. On kotkan näköalat mahtavat ja laajat, se näkee vuoret, metsiköt ja merten alat. Vain kotka uljaa lentonsa voi ulottaa. Myös minä tahtoisin kuin kotka kerran liitää. Ja nähdä meret, jotka turkoo silmä siitä. Myös tahtoisin mä nähdä kirkkaan vuorivirran. Millailla kristallin nyt säikyy juoksulaan. Vaan ennen muuta tahdon nousta Herran, ja elää asunnoissaan ikuisuuden verran. Ja kaikki rakkaat ennen meitä täältä menneet. Mä kohtaan kristallisen virran rannalla. Ne, jotka Herra ottaa saavat uuden voiman. Se poistaa epäilykset sekä tunnon soi. Kohottavat siipensä kuin uljat kotkat ja laakson syvyyksistä ylös nousevat. Näin Herran kohdanneina jatkavat he matkaa. Ei kiitos laulut koskaan heitä enää lakkaa. Ja vaikka uhkaa maailma ja myöskin saartaa, niin kotka kaartaa ylös luojan taivaan. I guess middle age is a trying time for the eagles too. Most uh, middle aged people are also concerned about uh, uh, their gradual decline of physical abilities and the awareness of mortality. However, uh, middle age can also be a springboard for a satisfying and a productive time during old age. In the middle age years of an eagle's life, they go through a phase uh, that's called um, a moping period. It's a time of non-activity. 
it is something like a depression. It's up to them if they want to live or to die. He can stay down in the valley here or just keep on soaring above in the head in the skies. Most eagles make their nests on the sides of cliffs or high up in trees where it's safe from any predators. The valley seems attractive to them, but down here in the valley, there's five eagles just standing over there. Those eagles are in a period of moping, I think. The eagle is a beautiful bird until he gets into this moping period. During this time, calcium deposits build up on their beaks, which cover the air holes on either side, and they have difficulty to breathe properly. And their feet become swollen, and they start to bleed. Then there's just two options left, to die or to go through a painful process of change which lasts for about 150 days or more. So you see, an eagle is not made to walk around like a chicken or to live like a turkey. He's not made for that kind of a lifestyle. He's made to soar high in the skies above. These five are almost done. Their eyes are dry and scaly. That's what happens when they live in such a dark, dark uh, depression area. They're not able to cry for help. It seems like they've become paralyzed. But wait, look up in the sky above. There's eagles flying around up there. They're flying in a circular pattern. They're older eagles. Every one of them had once been down here in this valley of depression before. They know how to get out. Now they've come back to help and to encourage these moping eagles overcome their moping. They're dropping fresh meat down to strengthen them. Strangely, not one of those eagles came down and landed in the valley below. They kept on flying. Two of those eagles began to eat while the other three just sat there moping. In that valley there were also some wooden white crosses. A man once told me that that's an eagle's graveyard. These are the ones that never left this valley which is full of rocks and dead trees. So the three remaining middle-aged eagles just kept wandering about on the ground with calcium building up on their beaks and with their heads drooping down. What did they say what happened to them? Why did they stay? What happened to them? Well, the three eagles come to a point in their lives where they saw other birds down there. So they too came down. Instead of flying away, they just settled down there. And the calcium started to build up on their beaks. And they did not want to eat. Weeks later, there were three more crosses in the valley. They had no strength. They just starved themselves to death. But two did begin to eat. Amongst those rocks up there, up on the cliffs, on the edges, that's where their nests are. And how do I know that these are the eagles that ate are up there? Well, they never leave the nest that they're born in. They fly from it, but they always return to it. They got enough strength to fly back to their nests and there they would then hit their beaks against the rocks and the calcium deposits would begin to fall off. The eagle got its smooth beak back 
and they were able to eat again properly. When you look with the high powered binoculars, you can see their eyes. When the eagle's head is turned a certain way, you can see water dripping from his eye down onto his beak. It looks like he's been crying. One of the features that happens while the eagle flies is that there's a covering over his eyes and the wind produces tears. Then, all of a sudden, you could hear that eagle in the valley making that a loud screech. It would be heard everywhere. They're doing the victory screech. They're telling everybody that they're back now. There are some who may think that this bird will never make it and that he'll just die down there in the valley of despair. But if he decides to eat, he regains his strength and soon he's seen flying again. Did you know that eagles are mentioned 32 times in the Bible? All through the scriptures, you will see that God favors the eagle. He's made the eagle like no other bird. No other bird has the strength of the eagle. Researchers say that there's nothing on the face of this earth as strong as an eagle. A 22-pound eagle has been known to carry a 100-pound animal for over a mile. The bald eagle also builds the largest nests. It can be as large as 9 feet in diameter. But if he comes down and stays too long in this valley, the first thing he notices is that his power is soon gone. This happens to some of us also. We once may have had God's power within us. We once may have mounted up with eagle wings. Or we once may have learned to soar above the problems that we face. But now we've gone back down into this world. And we've become entangled again in the affairs of this life and we've lost our strength. We cannot let the times we're living in wear us out. No matter what we may think or what we may see, God is in full control. Even though he sits back at times and he lets the enemy make his move, even in government situations, and even though they make the first move, God still has the final say. Remember that. So, if you're weary of well-doing, remember the words Isaiah the prophet. He gives power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with eagle wings. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Did you know the Hebrew word for wait does not just mean to sit around and be silent? It means to weave a garment. They are to do something. Isaiah also tells us that the Lord will give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So if you're down in the valley, don't mope like the eagles on the ground. Look up to the Lord. He'll feed you with heavenly manna so that your strength will come back. Put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Consider turning your life over to Jesus Christ and experience an adventure that's beyond imagination. You will never regret it. Let's, let's say a prayer. Blessed be your name, O God.
God, King of the universe, for the promises that are found in your word. Thank you for reminding us that we can soar like eagles. Your love and grace is amazing. I open my heart to accept you into my heart and my life. I confess my sins. Please forgive me. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, Father. Amen. We can apply the lessons we've heard from the moping eagle into our own lives and expand our horizons the way the eagles expand their territory. You too can soar like the eagle. Just put on that garment of praise. You'll see the difference. And thanks very much for watching this Finnish Connection episode today. I hope that this episode has been an encouragement and a blessing to you. And please don't forget to share this video with all your family members and all your friends. Thank you. May God bless you and be with you. Hey! hey. <laughs>